I have a problem. To do my project I order a whole lot of stuff and I need to sort it somehow. I tried to sort it in those boxes and in the, in the drawers over there and it just doesn't work. It's too much and I cannot find stuff and it becomes a big mess. So in today's project I'm gonna rip out the big white box and place a nice cabinet over there with a lot of storage space. Let's do it. I wanted this design to be as efficient as possible. So I measured out the space that I had, designed the thing on the computer and puzzled with all the possible configurations that would fit in this kind of space. Once I had that, I imported all the sheet sizes into the cutlass generator and brought that with me to the hardware store. Since I don't really like cutting three sheets of plywood to size, I asked the guy from the hardware store to cut it for me and then this is what you end up with. All really nice and cut pieces. It's basically a build kit. So, that saved me a lot of work and we can continue with the fun part, building the actual thing. If you remember when we made the shop cart, I connected the top and bottom just on it like this. Then when I had the panels like this, I countersunk for the screws, screwed the screws in and had a really solid connection. It's really strong and it works. But for this one, I don't want to do all the countersunking, all the pre-drilling, all the screwing. I just want to nail it together. And to make it a bit stronger and easier to position with the router, I'm cutting a groove in the top and the bottom panel so I can connect it easily like this, making it even stronger than the previous one. I'm gonna make four cabinets and two of each. So they will be stacked behind each other. So on the back cabinet is for these larger boxes and then on the front cabinet is for the smaller boxes, similar as I have in the shop. But since they have to sit in front of each other, I can make the front one with two boxes next to each other. So, so in this panel, this is the top panel and similar to the bottom panel, I need to make a slot here where I can stick another sheet of plywood in to yeah, hold the boxes in the center. So I'm going to use a track saw to make the slot in here. You can also do this with a router or if you have a table saw with a table saw, but for me this is easiest. So I've got this groove for the small cabinets to separate the small, two small boxes, but also for the big one. This is the main cabinet where the smaller cabinets are going inside. This will all fall into place later. But here I also need a panel in the middle, but not all the way. So I've got the groove right here, and then on the panel later, I'll make a small cutout so you won't see this. I've almost all the wooden parts done, but before I can put the cabinets together, there's one more thing I need to do. I need to make the rails. Because with the rails like this, I will never be able to put my drill in between here to mount them later when it's all done. I would have preferred to do this after painting, but I cannot. So I'm going to put them on now. And here I use some steel tubing to do it. But on the new build, I'm using this aluminum corner profiles. I got a lot of it and I think it will be a little bit nicer on the wood than steel tubing. So let's cut this to size. So I have all the aluminum strips cut and drilled and sanded. I have the first plate with the strips on it, so let's make the first box. And this is the first box 
done. That's pretty nice. So in this one it fits five of these. There will be another one of this for another five of these. So that's ten of these boxes. And then in front of this there's going to be a row with ten of the small ones. And then for the other one also ten of the small ones. So that's a whole lot of boxes. I'm super happy with that. But there's one thing. This one doesn't fit. Over here I have 25 millimeters, which is the same as I used on the other one, but I made an assumption and that's where it went wrong. These things that I used to slide on, I haven't measured it on this one, on the big ones. I only measured the small ones and I just assumed that the ribs would be the same size on this one. That's not the case. So. I'm going to solve the issue here in the most constructive way. I first thought to modify the boxes, but and that would save me just a couple of minutes. But that would mean that I can only use these boxes in here. If I would be to buy new IKEA boxes, they would not fit. So that's not really a good solution. So I'm going to just modify the drawer slides. And it's just this distance that I need extra. So I'm going to use the existing rails as the positioning for the new ones. So I'm going to grab a new one, put it underneath here, screw it in place and then take the top one off and then repeat that for all of them. That's better. Here it fits and on the bottom it also still fits so that's really nice. I need to make one more of this one and let's do that a bit quicker. And that makes two. So these are the two for the big boxes and as you can see they can fit ten big boxes in here. And my idea is that these ones slide in and out of the larger cabinet with the smaller one, so this is just for show, in front of it. So here will be small boxes, and you slide it out and you can open it on a hinge to reach the back one. So this is just for things that I don't need that often and things that are a bit larger. And then in the front boxes there are the smaller stuff that I need more often. So I'm gonna make two more of these, but for the small boxes. And let's do that even faster. These ones will each hold 10 containers, as I said before, and will hinge on the other box. So that's really nice. Next up is the main box where all the other boxes will fit in. So it's going to be about this wide and twice as deep as that these are so I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that in here but I'll probably manage it's gonna be very similar in design as these ones with a center panel and well, in the sides and the top of course but the difference is that the center panel does not go all the way up to the front so this is the center panel and I cut a groove in the top and the bottom panel only 30 centimeters. So on this panel I need to make a cutout here for the part that's not not in the groove. So I didn't make the groove all the way to the front because you always have this little transition with from either the saw blade or the router bit. Oh by the way this is how it looks to do a project like this in a small workshop. It's packed. I'm constantly moving things around to get to get to the stuff that I need and to have place for myself and my tripod. So it's a bit of a pain, but we'll get there. The boxes in the back are going to be mounted on the drawer slides. And then the front boxes will be hinged on the back boxes later. But let's start with this. And I'm thinking to mount them somewhere in the middle. Somewhere like this. Let's make a quick template for that. It's coincidence, but if I use the same spacer that I used on the big box, I get exactly the right placement of the cabinet when I put it in. So that's really nice. That is because this one is a bit smaller 
but also because I want to have some play on the top and the bottom and well coincidentally this puts it in exactly the right spot so that's nice now I have the cabinet made with the drawer slides for the boxes and the drawer slides for well the real drawer slides next step is to mount the hinges for the front box so let's do that I'm mounting the hinges uh, just like this with the same screws as I used everywhere at first I felt like that's never gonna be strong enough but I made the other one and that feels really sturdy so I'll just mount it like this and if it ever drops off I'll drill holes all the way through and put a bolt behind it but for now this is the easiest look at this that's nice There are two little changes that I made off camera to improve the thing a bit more. First thing is, over here, you can just barely not see it, I drilled a hole because if you pull this out, normally you have to draw slides on the side here and you can pull some sort of a pin to get the whole thing out. But right now, because the thing is so deep and the drawer slides are only on the back part, you cannot reach the drawer slide. So I had to drill a hole in the side to reach it so you can take this out if you need to otherwise that would be practically impossible the other thing I did is I added a little support tab over here I felt that if this just hangs on the hinge 24 7 with all the weight on it it might sag a bit over time and since it's mostly closed anyway I figured why not give it a little support Apart from that, I'm super happy with how it works. If you'd like to see more projects like this with efficient storage or efficient or smart ideas for your workshop, go check out the playlist over there and I'll see you there. Don't forget, dare to experiment and have fun creating.